Hey guys, Mr. Real Talk going today. Today I'm going to be doing a review of Mac OS X Mountain Lion. Alright, now let's go over a couple of main features. The first one I'm going to go over today is the Notification Center. Obviously this is transferred over from iOS, and it's a really nice addition to OS X Mountain Lion. What you could do is you could either click up here in the menu bar, or you could slide two fingers across the trackpad if you have one. You just slide two fingers from the right to the left, it opens it up. Now, um, I had a little bit of trouble figuring it out, but I couldn't get it always open. You gotta slide your fingers from the very right. Like, you gotta literally touch the edge of the trackpad and slide, or it will not open. Like, if you just put your fingers in the middle and slide to the left, nothing happens. Alright, now we got that out of the way. Let's, uh, talk about Twitter and Facebook integration. And Facebook integration isn't gonna be available until iOS 6 is released in the fall. They do have Twitter integration right now, as you can see. I can tweet right here from my notification center without actually going to Twitter's website or using the app right there. And uh, whenever I get a new tweet or somebody tweets to me or a notification on Twitter, it pops up under here. Now, I don't have any notifications right now. I wish I did to show y'all how it looked, but uh, I don't. And the next thing I'm going to go over is Safari. Um, I used to only use Google Chrome because I like the feeling of having tabs open. But with Safari now, they enable the tab feature, and it even has uh, this. i got to open up a new tab to show y'all. But it even has this. The uh, thing like almost like iOS where you can open up the tabs and look between them. You just pinch out in the site, and it has a, uh, and it pulls out into that. But now that we have tabs, and you can add a tab, it makes me feel so much better, and I feel that's a little bit faster. Uh, I know it does have the Nitro Java engine or something like that that I was reading about, that uh, only Apple has on iOS and stuff like that, and that's pretty fast. I mean, it's a lot faster than Google Chrome was, in my opinion. Now, oh, I gotta show y'all about iCloud tabs in Safari. Now this thing is what's right here. If you have an iPhone, once the iOS 6 is on it, it'll show you what what like tabs are opening on devices. Let's say you have like two Macs and an iPad and iPhone. Well, if you have uh, Apple's page open on your iPhone and you get on your Mac, you can click up there and it'll show you what tabs are open on all your other devices. So you let's say you want to like you read something on your iPhone, you want to go back to your Mac and pick it up, or vice versa. You just leave a tab open on that device and you get to the next device and you can click right here and open up the exact same web page. Um, what else did I to talk about? <clears throat> Alright, the next thing we're going to go to is Reminders. This is just like Reminders for iOS. It syncs with the Reminders for iOS and everything. You just, let's say I want to add a reminder. Tuesday, pick up school supplies. Period. Now this is going to sync with all of my other devices. And, see, right here. Tuesday pickup. Well, see, I checked it off to be completed, but it's going to sync to all my other devices. Alright, the next thing I'm going to show y'all is Notes, which I'm on right now. This is pretty much just like Notes for iOS. You add a new Note, it syncs right to uh, your um, <clears throat> iPhone, iPad, or other Mac with Notes on it. Um, pick up, pick up school supplies Tuesday. Done. Um, see it says updating, now it's updated to all my other devices, but obviously I don't really need to pick up school supplies Tuesday, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it now. <clears throat> Next thing I'm going to go over is dictation. Alright, I'm going to uh, actually use dictation right here to finish this note that I was making. To, uh, for standard, you got to turn on dictation. It's not on when you first get it. Because um, Apple, when you turn it on, though, it does come up with a little note, and Apple tells you that you, it does send all your contacts to their servers. So again, maybe like, it helps you if you tell it stuff about people to know who they are. So you do have to accept that privacy issue. But once you got it enabled, the default shortcut is to double click the function key in the very left. So let's say, um, uh, it, it actually does work pretty good, but let's just, just fix something. Uh, the problem with my Mac is that Launchpad is jumpy, period. See, uh, it is a little bit not working right sometimes, but if you talk clearly, it'll work fine. The next thing I'm going to show y'all AirPlay mirroring. What you do is you just, you, if you have an Apple TV, and you have to have like a compatible Mac. Not all the Macs are compatible, which made a lot of people mad. Well, anyway, you just click that and you got Apple TV. And it takes a second. Sometimes it doesn't work. You got to restart your computer and then do it and then it'll work. But that little blue thing means it's on right now. And you can change the desktop size to the size of uh, this Mac and Apple TV. I'll leave it on this Mac. It looks better. 
in my uh on my Apple TV. The next thing, Power Nap. Now, Power Nap is only available on uh, MacBooks. Basically, what it is is while you put your computer to sleep, it'll occasionally wake up to update things. So you won't like leave it sleeping for three months, get back to it, and it'll be so out of date. It'll take you two days to sit there updating everything. It'll automatically do that for you while it's asleep. Now, there's not really much I can show you with that because I don't have a MacBook. This is actually an iMac. The next thing I'm going to show you all is messaging. If you had iMessages before, you would have noticed that uh, <clears throat> that it didn't have all these new features. iMessages now has a couple new features. Let's go ahead and show you. Um, uh, let's tell her what's up. Don't respond. Uh, another thing, dictation is... Uh, is System wide, I can be in anything. Just double clap, double tap the function key, and it'll work fine. Let's say, uh, click right here. In dictation, period. See, come up fine right there. I can hit enter to send, stuff like that. This thing right here is what they added. I noticed you can uh, click this to have a video chat. Now, depending on what service you're using, with let's say, uh, like this is the iMessage, obviously, so it's going to use, uh, it's going to use, uh, so you FaceTime. Well, if you're at Google or something, they'd probably use Skype. I'm not really sure about that. Um, get out of that. Show you all the next thing. <clears throat> the new dock design. This is probably, honestly, the first thing I noticed. The old dock was more of a glass look. This looks more almost like an aluminum kind of look, almost like the outside of the new MacBooks. It almost looks like a uh, unibody aluminum dock, if I could say it like that. The problems that I'm having with my Mac are... Uh, I had a couple problems when I first bought it. They had to do a fresh install like twice, and finally it was working right. For about a month, it was working fine, but then I updated it to Mountain Lion, and I had to do another fresh install, and it still doesn't work. About uh, this, I don't know if y'all y'all probably gonna be able to see it, but that's really jumpy. Um, it doesn't always happen when I first restart my system; it'll be fine. But Launchpad, it just you probably can't see it because this is a quick time screen record, but. That's just really jumpy. It just doesn't look very pleasant to use Launchpad. That's about the only thing I had to complain about. Uh, everything else is fine. This is different too. Right here, they have uh, the login, like who you're logged in as, stuff like that. Same spotlight, notification center. You can uh, change the system preferences under uh, notification center and stuff just by going to that. You can change what thing come up as a badge or uh, whatever you want. Uh, Let's go ahead and show you about dictation. You can change your voice. Samantha is the voice of Siri, if y'all wondering. That's actually what sounds like Siri the closest, I think. I'm pretty sure what Siri's voice is. Right here, you can change the, uh, the different shortcuts. This has been a video by uh, Mr. Real Talk Only, guys. Um, I'm going to be coming back with a review of Beats by Dr. Gray Studios in the silver. Uh, subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.